Hello everyone! Today we are excited to introduce a new capability that's been requested by numerous customers over the years. This is the ability to run simple assessments including multiple choice, multiple select, and true false questions. And this can be offered side by side with programming assignments or lab exercises. So I'll begin with a student view. So what we have here is a course that's got a set of assessments. This first one is a general knowledge check. And when I come into the general knowledge check as a student, I'm presented with a sequence of five questions. And so you'll see that we can provide some content, including images or video, some diagrams, and even charts. Here we've got the question, the book is to reading as a fork is to what? So a fork is to eating. You'll also notice that we can embed videos. And instead of just single choice questions, we can also do multi-select question here as well. So which of the following can be arranged into a five letter English word? So we'll go ahead and choose two. So let's choose these two. And then we'll click next. And you'll see here that we've got a code snippet and a true false question. Okay, so once we're done with the questions, we can go ahead and do a submission. You'll also notice down below that we've got our progress across the bottom here. So we did four out of the five questions and we only got the first one correct. We can answer this one as true and we can jump back to the second one and answer these two. Answers two and three, that's the correct one. And if we go and click submit, we'll get the updated course. And so you'll see that we got six out of eight correct. Um, we never answered question five, so there'll be an unanswered question there. So that's a quick view of multiple choice questions in the Volcarium format. This one is an assessment that has both a programming component as well as multiple choice questions side by side. And both are auto graded off of the same submit button. And so you'll see here, we've got the file browser, the file editor, and a little show window here. And so the intent here is to solve the program exercise and then also answer the questions on the right here. And so what we'll do here is execute Python, pictorial that apply to, and you'll see that that is correct. So I found three, factorial three is incorrect. We do a submission and it's taking a little bit. So the submission is being sent to our backend. You'll see that we have failed in all aspects. Failed criteria one and criteria two of the program exercise. We have not been scored yet by our instructor on a coding style and we got all zeros on the multiple choice questions. So if we go back and update the code and we'll wait for it to save and submit it, you'll see the program exercise then gets created and we should get full points for that. So again, everything is being sent over to our backend. And so you'll see now that criteria one and criteria two both have full points and everything else remains the same. So if we go and update our answers on multiple choice questions and do another submit, then we will have full points. Okay, now that you have a view of the assessments that are possible, we'll carry them. Let's switch over to the authoring of multiple choice assessments. 
And so here I'm over into the teacher view of the world. And if you watch our earlier video on reading instruction, you'll know that we support markdown format. So our simple assessment is actually an extension of that standard markdown format and is designed to be really simple, fun, and intuitive to create quizzes. So let's start with building a brand new assignment. Let's call this new quiz. And as you know, each assignment consists of one or more parts. So we'll just create a part. And then we will choose a lab type. And the lab type we will choose is either a multi-panel or programming lab. And I'm going to choose the programming lab. And we'll change the layout options. So we'll turn on HTML, but we're going to turn off our browser console and source. Then we'll save, then go back to the assignment, and then we're going to turn up the grades because we want to provide feedback to the student as soon as they click submit. And we'll save that. And now I can go ahead and publish. And what we're publishing is essentially an empty assignment right now, but now what we can go ahead and do is populate this assignment. So now we can go ahead and click Configure Workspace, and that's going to take us into the workspace area. And now what we need to do is create a README file, and that's going to be in the work area. So we'll create a readme.md and submit it and now there's going to be a readme.md file um, and what we will do here is start writing our assessment in this markdown format and for vocarium we have a pragma at which will indicate the beginning of a question. And then for the question, we'll have a score. So we're going to give the first question a score of 5, a max score of 5. And then we'll also give a rubric name, and we'll say question 1. And we can also give a description. So we can say question 1. What's one plus one? Then we will also provide the choices. So here we are using bracket, parentheses, parentheses, bracket to indicate a choice. So this is going to be one, and we're going to do the same thing with two. We're just going to do three choices here. So three. Now there's three choices here and this will be presented as radio boxes and as part of this what we'll do is indicate the correct answer with an X and now once we're done with that we can go ahead and click Save and generate the quiz and you can go ahead and click Update. So what we have done now is created a quiz for what's one plus one with three choices. Let's go ahead and switch over to the student view so we could see what that looks like. We'll go ahead and back out of this and you'll see now that we have a new quiz. Go ahead and click my work and I'll enter directly into the quiz. We can see here that we have a question, what's 1 plus 1 with answers 1, 2, and 3. So we want to keep building on this assessment. Let's create another question here. So this next question we're creating here, let's go ahead and do a multi-select question. And we'll do a question giving a max of 4 points. And we'll do question two. And we'll also go ahead and embed a video. And we can say, please watch the video and answer the question. 
So for the video, we'll go over to YouTube and we've got this primary color song by Sesame Studios. And we'll go ahead and grab an embed link. We're going to copy it and we're going to go ahead and drop it into the markdown file. And now we can go ahead and ask the question. We'll do question two, which are not the primary colors. And we'll go ahead and give a sequence of possible choices. And this time, instead of using bracket parentheses, we use bracket bracket to have check boxes. And for the first answer, we can say blue. Then the next one, we can say indigo. And then orange. And last one, we can do red. And again, we will indicate the correct answers. So indigo is not a primary color and orange is also not a primary color. So now we can go ahead and save, then generate the quiz. And after that, we can go ahead and click update. We can go ahead and switch back to the student view, reload the quiz. And now you can see that there are two questions here. One, what's one plus one? Followed by a second question, which are not primary colors. So let's actually answer the questions. We can answer the first one incorrectly and answer the second one correctly. And after that, we can hit submit. We will send it to the grading server and it'll come back and say we got question two correct, got a full four points, but we did fail question one. As we create more and more questions, having it on a single page may not be desirable. And what we can do is when we generate the quiz, we can actually choose to break up the questions into its own tab. And we can go ahead and generate this and do an update. Go ahead and click yes. We'll switch back over to the student view. You'll see that we've got multiple tabs and we can actually track the progress of each question. So we can see that we did answer these questions correctly. We'll answer this one correctly and do a resubmission. And get updated scores. So we got four points for question two, five points here, four points here, so a total of nine points. So there you have it. It's pretty easy to create and incorporate a simple assessment into your course. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at .com. We do also have documentation for this feature at help.bocarium.com, as noted here. And there we have it. That is all I have for you guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.